You know about that COVID stuff, right? Ten official victims. No fingerprints, no blood. Just a clove hitch tied to every victim's house. I've been meaning to talk to you. You know we're made in God's image. But men like you and me, we got thoughts. So we saw the clove hitch killer. It was fantastic. It was phenomenal. Maybe you can help me with this, Spencer. Okay. Why is it that this movie was far better than anything we've seen in the cinema for the last three months? What separates this film from all the other ones that we've seen is that everything served its purpose well. It's very well done. And it shows what you can do when you don't give in to the excesses of Hollywood. When you don't have to pay Johnny Depp $20 million to show up for 30 seconds. Right. <laughs> the main strength of the movie was in the, the tension that it trafficked in. Like, th that was its primary currency, was tension. Yeah. And it executed it in an extremely artful manner. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was on the edge of my seat for most of the movie. Did you put Serial Killer and Artful in the same sentence? Yeah. <laughs> in 2018? <laughs> <laughs> it, it earned it, yeah. I looked online, I couldn't find the budget of this movie, okay. but I'm sure it was pretty low. Because there's, there's no, no gore! It's a serial killer film and there's no gore! Right. There's no special effects, there aren't any high-paid actors, uh, or there aren't any overpaid actors. Yeah. yeah, and there's no expensive locations that they had to go shoot at or anything like yeah, that. There's no constructed sets either. I, I think all the sets were like on location. Not everything had to be so showy. Yeah. Like the cinematography, it wasn't anything special, but it didn't need to be that special. Mm -hmm. And the music, there was hardly any music and it was more atmospheric. Yeah. The actors carried these performances so well that you didn't really need to heighten it. Or you didn't have need to have that music be like, BOOM! Like, scary yeah. moment, you know? Right. This is um, what you want to do with your budget versus what you should do with your budget. Exactly. <laughs> because with Anne and the Apocalypse, there's gore in it, but their gore was so cheap and it just didn't work well. And they should have just done what Clovich did, which was... Uh, just not really show any gore. Like, this is the complete yeah. opposite of Halloween. The original and the newest one that came out. Both, I think, are actually pretty good films in their own rights, but this is reinventing kind of like what a serial killer film is, because before this, we've had Silence of the Lambs, the uh, Zodiac. But all of them have kind of followed the exact same kind of interpretation of what a serial killer should be and what the film should include and such. This one kind of reinvents it in a way. Yeah, I, I thought there was a bit of Zodiac in this, actually, because of, it's about a serial killer who's kind of evaded uh, detection, we have characters that are trying to figure out who it is, but there, there's a, you know, a lot of clues and they're not sure. Uh, this was a more personal story than Zodiac, I thought. It's me. a lot more emotional, yeah. yes. A film that I could bring up that kind of is the complete polar opposite is Sucker Punch. And a lot of people love that film, and I understand why. You know, visually, eye candy, like, it's cool to see. But at the same time, like, when I was watching it, I was so bored because I wasn't emotionally invested in anything that was going on. Right. There, I couldn't attach to any of the characters and such. Like, when the action scenes showed up, that's fine, put them on YouTube. I, I'll, I only want to waste five minutes of my day watching that, not an hour and a half. Right, right. Uh, and so it's, ch it's so that film is cheap, but this one is just, oh wow, like what's gonna happen next? Yeah, the basic story of the movie is there's, uh, the main character is, is this teenage kid uh -huh. who is uh, living with his family in a small town. Island. And uh, yeah, and we, we open the movie seeing that there was used to be a serial killer in the town who killed 10 people. The town remembers those victims, okay. but they never caught the killer. And, you know, most of the people, they don't think about it on a daily basis. Um, the protagonist doesn't really, but he meets this girl who does. She seems pretty interested in it. She's kind of an outcast. People don't really you know, talk about it. Yeah. That's the basic setting that we start with. You feel the suffocation at times because yeah. there's all these power figures just coming into his life. And it kind of plays into the whole idea of what an American family should be, the American ideals and what's mm -hmm. hidden underneath. You know, you can even argue it's kind of like it. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, where you have the perfect suburban town, but then in the sewers we have our dark secrets. Yeah. And it's the same thing here. You know, you have the scout leader, the Boy Scouts, the goodest of the good. And then you have the, the church. Father. Yeah, the church, yeah. the father who's just like, oh, I want him to be my dad, you know, and like the perfect Christian family. Yeah. And it's also kind of like yeah. a coming of age to, mm -hmm. in a way. Weird yeah. way. He's within all these different like uh, community structures, but he's not in control of things. Things are, they're still chaotic and they feel tense. I think a lot of teenagers feel a, a tension or an anxiety or unease with life. You know, they're, they're growing into themselves yeah. and they're figuring out what life's gonna be like. And, and I got, I got a, a bit of that from him. Yeah, earlier in the film, he's in the car with uh, his kind of girlfriend, soon to be girlfriend, whatever. And then they found a bondage photo inside of the car. She thinks that he's a pervert and he's like, no, 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 it's not mine. 
And so the text that he was receiving was about that, like the school thing, he's a pervert. Right. And it's reinforced when he, he's trying to talk to his mom and says, no, this is an important text. I need to do it. But he yeah. doesn't want to tell her right. about what's really going on. So it kind of reinforces that. Right. Which the, the, is good. Right. There's this constant theme of like hiding things. So yeah. through most of the movie, he has a pretty steely expression on his face. He's, he's holding a lot of things in and feeling like all these things, but he's not expressing them. I thought it was effective because of that emotional repression and trying to show something to the world that is acceptable to society, which mirrored his dad's storyline as well. Okay, I, I, I can see from that point of view, but even then, I feel like that a lot of people who actually suppress those kinds of emotions would feel a little bit of something like maybe you would see like a little subtle eye twitch mm. or just like, you know, maybe almost getting teary eyed because you're holding back so much. I just feel like that I should have seen a little bit more that was going on because the entire time, yeah, I just, I, I just, that's the only thing I didn't like about this movie was mm. Tyler's performance. I think at the beginning of the movie, I might have agreed. I thought I, I didn't really feel the characters in like the first couple of scenes. But after just a few minutes, I started feeling the emotional timbre that the uh, filmmakers were putting out there. And, and the sense of tension kept rising through the whole movie. And that, that's yeah. what I found the most interesting is, is the, the ebb and flow of the tension and mystery and the way that they wove them together. They do some very interesting things with um, manipulating how the audience is feeling about something. So it starts with tension regarding some other things like, okay, they found the bondage photo in the car. So he's tense about high school stuff. And you know, that's, that's a relatable tension for a lot of people. And then it starts building as you learn more about the killer and about the, the world and about the characters. After that, that mid-story peak, because of the way that they wove together the story elements, yeah. and also I think the way it's shot, the, the, okay. the steady cinematography wasn't, it wasn't dynamic, but I think it served that purpose very well. It was steady, it was precise, it was focused. Yeah. Those were some of the decisions along with deciding, okay, we're gonna have this shot of a relatively mundane thing right after we've built up these other elements and you feel the tension just kind of keep growing through the mundane scenes. And in those scenes, because of what they've done to set up the characters and the, the plot, you feel this tension around things that don't look scary or they don't look, you know. Uh, right, because you like have this preconceived emotion that's been built up inside of you yeah. and you're like, oh man, what am I to suspect from this now? Now we're just so. spoilers, so if you want to skip spoilers, just go to the mark on the bottom of the screen here. Yeah, so essentially throughout this film, Tyler is trying to figure out if his father is the clove hitch killer. Yeah. He finds the bondage photo and then he goes into the back. The shed. Uh, the back shed. And then he looks under and he finds like some uh, stuff that like kind of links his dad to the to the killer and such. Then at one point, you're, like you're really starting to believe like, oh, yes, yes, his dad is the killer. And then they go out into this camping trip. And then, you know, you have just the sun in the foreground and the dad in the background out of focus with a gun. Yeah, it's and then they're such like, a great Yeah, 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 tension, it's yeah. just like tension. And then, yeah. and then his son says, where are we going, dad? And then there's like a three second pause and he says, we're almost there, son. And it was like, oh, what's going <laughs> on? And, 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 and what was interesting was that this is like an hour and 10 minutes into the film. Mm. And I'm just like, is this really the climax? Like, is this where it's gonna end? Like, what's, what's going on? And then, you know, he sits down with his son and then he says, I know you've been snooping around my place. I know. And then you're like, oh, God, oh, God. And then he says, uh, I'm not the killer. It's uh, your uncle, Rudy, uh, tried to commit suicide by driving off of a cliff and he became paralyzed. I didn't think that we were going to watch it for this. So before I actually went onto Wikipedia, because I was just like, all right, I'll just read the story, see what happens. And I got to the part where it says, like, Ru uh, Uncle Rudy's the killer, you know, the other killer and all that. And I was like, oh, OK. And then I stopped reading. Ah. Uh. And so <laughs> it was just really interesting because it kept my interest. The film was spoiled for me, but it was still so interesting to see through. See, we like films. <laughs> we like them. But it was so good. It, it kept my interest. Like what I really liked about that was you're seeing through, the, through Tyler's eyes that the dad is very likely the killer. You don't know how much the dad knows. You didn't see the dad, you know, looking, watching the kid or something. You saw the dad um, realize that the lock was like, it wasn't where he would have left it. So the audience with Tyler, they're like, "What? how much does he know? You really feel what Tyler's feeling, that he wants to believe his dad, because he loves his dad. Yeah, he does. And he wants to think that his dad isn't the killer. He's been so inundated with uh, these ideas of family and community that I could feel the conflict in the kid, which was really good, because part of me didn't like the idea of really Tyler's gonna agree to burn all the evidence because oh it, yeah because he's talking to his dad and he says okay dad but then we either have to go to the police or we have to burn the evidence right it was just oh. yeah so so I struggled to 
see that he would be fully on board with that, but the, the fact that they built up his character as prizing these elements of family and community, uh, I, I thought it worked. I thought it, it was believable that while he would have conflict in him because we're getting rid of this evidence of people's murders, obviously, he would still be justifying that with, this is what's best for the family, this is, you know, a, this is what a, 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 an adult decision would be. I thought it worked. Yeah, because yeah. everyone else is making decisions for Tyler. Right. The family discord has been settled for now. And they're gonna, Tyler's gonna go off to the camp, which is something he'd asked about earlier. Yeah. So, you, as an audience member, you're not even really worried at that point. You're thinking, okay, like, that's something he wanted, so this is good. Yeah. So, okay, well, are we gonna follow him on his trip? What's gonna happen next? But then the next scene, oh yeah, the dad yeah. is at the dinner table and he's talking about, oh, you know, honey, you should take our daughter and go to see your mom for a couple of weeks. That would, I think that would be great for you and she'd love it. And it's this otherwise banal scene of them sitting at the dinner table just having dinner. And you just, yeah, there's and, something and lingering And you start in the back feeling like, mind. wait, no, this yeah. isn't right. Yeah. Like he's, the tension starts building up again beautifully. Yeah, yeah, because you, the camera is just holding around him and he's just doing mundane things yeah. like, just talking to the cop or just driving around or going to fix someone's yard or something like mm -hmm. that. And it's just mundane, but there's something tingling in the back of your mind that says, the camera's here for some reason. Yeah. And I don't feel good. I think it's worth exploring the dad's emotional journey. Not everybody has a desire to kill people, but the way it's presented, you can see the struggle. You can, you can, if you had, if you ever had an urge or a desire and you're not proud of it and you want to get rid of it, but you struggle with it and you yeah. still go back to it, that's relatable. Yeah, you understand where he's coming from, his frustration about mm -hmm. who he is as a human being, because yeah, we all have those temptations. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be as simple as even like you're trying to lose weight and you see the Kit Kat yeah, yeah. and you don't want it. Like there's a scene that's just kind of like that in this film yeah. and you can relate to it. You can understand of like, you know, like, oh, I'm addicted to it, but I can't have it. It's been a while since I've seen a horror movie with a, a killer that is that relatable that that they've they've humanized you know yeah he's not he's not a michael myers he's not a freddy krueger he's a dad when you yourself as an audience member are second guessing him you're like no but i don't want him to be the killer because he seems like the perfect dad right and, and, and that's what makes it so creepy yeah because it could be anyone when he gets caught by his son at one point he's trying to justify his actions he believes he knows he can weasel his way out even more yeah because he knows that his kid still loves him and trusts him. Even with all the evidence in front of him, Tyler was still wanting to believe his yeah, dad. He yeah. wanted his dad not to be the killer. So his dad gives him this, you know, cockamamie. <laughs> his dad gives him this story that is obviously a, a stretch. It was such a stretch, but it w but it worked because it was right. like his last thing that he could try right, to do. Right, And And then he hands him the gun and his dad tries to shoot him with it. Right. It showed that his dad had taught, taught, him, taught well. him well. Yeah, He never, point a gun at someone if you don't intend to shoot him. Tyler didn't load it because he didn't. He knew he didn't want to shoot his dad. And it was interesting that the dad actually suspected that he had loaded it. It just, it, it just flows so yeah. well. It, it, the, the entire third act is just, oh God. Yeah, and, and, but that says a lot because it shows the manipulation that he was executing and that he thought about his, he thought about Tyler much differently than Tyler thought about him. Tyler had this, you know, purity of, of, of thought and uh, of, of, his, of his, his approach. Because that's what society is always telling him, right. you know, this is the way you have to be, this is the Christian values, the Boy Scout values, right. everything. And now it's up to Tyler to finally make his own decision. Yeah. That was just powerful. And, uh, right. He believed his dad up to the moment that his dad proved to him that he can't be believed. <laughs> Late in the movie, when, when he encounters his dad and he has his gun, uh, so he confronts the dad, it's, it's a climactic moment. Yeah. And then the movie cuts to um, the previous point where he and the girl are piecing together um, the trail of clues that will lead them to actually confront the dad at the climax. Part of me didn't like that because suddenly the tension was all gone. You know, for about 10 minutes I thought, oh, where'd that tension go? I liked it. <laughs> but, um, that's not even really a complaint, it's just a, an observation of a choice they made that I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. When you're making a movie or telling a story, you don't want to use the same color all the time. It's like like paint, make a painting. You don't have one canvas that's all one color. Yeah. It, I liked that it wasn't just horribly tense all the way through. There, there was a, a shape to it. There was a, a, a progression of it. And it it was so effective that I I want to watch it again. Yeah, it's, I do too. I, it, I just thought it was really great. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen both of us smile so genuinely in a yeah. long time. This yeah. is, yeah, this film is great. Like, and, and even more happens in this film. At the very end of the film, Tyler makes a huge decision. 
it, it ties the theme together. It, it ends on a note that you feel like is actually justified. Mm. It doesn't feel artificial. It's just, it's just, it's a great film. Yeah, yeah. This is. I think we've seen eleven films now for movie stubs. Yeah, I think so. I believe so. Uh, and this is the first one that I will wholeheartedly recommend. Oh, um, okay. It's not only effective in the in how tense it is and how yeah. it has a lot of interesting things about about family. <laughs> it's a fantastic film. Yeah. So go 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 watch it. Yeah, go just go watch it. Yeah, Clo the Clovich Killer. Go give them your money. They they deserve it. Yeah. Where are we going? Almost there, bud. So if you've seen an independent movie recently that isn't very well known, but is really good, then post about it in the comments below, because we'd love to see it and uh, talk about it here. Yeah, that'd be good. Or we could see Bumblebee.